I must saw it now, Sandra. Okay. <clears throat> good to go. Okay, good evening, um, members of the council and members of the public watching on our YouTube channel. This is our annual meeting of Derbyshire Dales District Council. My name is Sandra Lamb, I'm the Director of Corporate Services and I'm the temporary chairman until someone is elected. So could I ask all members please to go through the audio check where Jackie calls your name in alphabetical order and if you can just confirm that you can hear and we can check that you can be heard. Thanks Jackie. Uh, Councillor Allison. Here. Atkin. Yes I'm here and I can hear. Bright. I'm here. Buckler. Sorry, yes, I can hear. Uh, Bull. Yes, thank you. Martin Burfoot. Councillor Burfoot, would you like to come off mute? Yes, I'm here. Sue Burfoot. Yes, thank you. Buttle. Hello there. Chapman. Clear. Yeah. Donnelly. Fine, yeah, thank you. Elliot. Here. Fitzherbert. Here. Flitter. Councillor Flitter. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Froggett. Yes, Jackie, thank you. Vaness. Here. Gamble. Here. Hill. Yes, receiving. Hobson. Here, Jackie, thank you. Hughes. Here. Please. Yes, thank you. Tony Morley. Here. Michelle Morley. Yes, thank you, Jackie. Brian. Yes, I'm here. Purdy. Here, Jackie, thank you. Ratcliffe. Here, thank you. Councillor Raw is here, is she? No. Councillor Rose. No. Councillor Salt. Or Councillor Shirley. Not here. Slack, is he back? Not yet. Statham. Here, Jackie. Sutton. Here, Jackie. Brindle. Here. Wayne. Here, thank you. And did Councillor Wakeman get in? Councillor Wakeman's here, he's just connecting to audio. Ah. You can confirm that you can hear us, Councillor Wakeman. You just come off mute and confirm that you can hear me. Yeah, can you hear me? That's yeah, great. thank you. So we may have one or two members joining us shortly through the waiting room. We'll just keep an eye on that. Um, but item one is apologies for absence, Jackie. Um, yes, <clears throat> we've had apologies from councillors Cruz, McDonough, and Paulie, um, and Councillor Archer possibly arriving late. Thank you. So on item two of the agenda, which is election of chairman for the year 2020-21, could I have a nomination, please? Councillor Purdy. So Councillor Purdy here. Um, I'd like to nominate Councillor Sir Richard Fitzherbert. I think he's done a fantastic job uh, since May last year and in previous years. So that's my uh, nomination. Thank you. Thank you. Does that find a seconder? Uh, Councillor Hobson. Yeah. Thank you. I'm happy to I'm happy to second Sir Richard. He continues to do a sterling job in his role. And I'd like to pay tribute to him, particularly since the introdu introduction of the Zoom, which has made his uh, role even more demanding. I'm sure everyone will agree. Thank you. Are there any other nominations for chairman? No, so we'll go to the vote. Um, over to you, Jackie, please, for the roll call. Um, Councillor Allison. For. Uh, Atkin. For. Bright. For. Buckler. For. Bull. For. Martin Burfoot. For. Sue Burfoot. For. Battle. For. Chapman. For. Donnelly. For. Elliot. Four. Fitzherbert. Four. Flitter. Four. Froggett. 
Oo. Tunas? Oo. Gamble? Councillor Gamble? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Uh, four. Hill? Four. Hobson? Four. Hughes? Four. Please? Four. Tony Morley? Four. Michelle Morley? Four. O'Brien? Four. Purdy? Four. Ratcliffe? Four. Rose? Not Rose, Raw, Salt, Shirley, not, not here still. Slack, not back. Stay them. Four. Sutton. Four. Swindle. Four. Wayne. Four. And Waitman. Four. Okay, so that looks unanimous. So Councillor Fitzherbert has been elected to be chairman of the council, and it's over to you. Thank you very much, Sandra, and um, thank you for all your help uh, uh, backing us all up uh, for all your hard work. And in honour of your last meeting tonight, I've got some flowers here on the table in my screen in your honour. Um, but we'll come to Sandra's um, last meeting uh, later on, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, thank you very much, members and colleagues, for putting your trust and confidence uh, in me for this coming year again. It's an honour to chair our full council, I will once again try to do my best to be polite and fair, yet firm throughout all our proceedings. Uh, as has been mentioned, the task is not an easy one at the best of times, and it's been made harder by the current situation of coronavirus. And since March, we've operated on this virtual basis. And I've said before in the last weeks, uh, during council, as, as I'm chairing uh, this meeting uh, with so many, so many members present, I'm furiously searching both my screens. That's why I look at different angles all the time, trying to see who's lined up next. Uh, and please forgive me if uh, I take a little longer to register your interest or your request to speak. I'll do my best to spot you in this rather extraordinary virtual world. Um, but also in these times, I must point out, please, for everybody's uh, importance here, it's more important we all strive to make our points with clarity, brevity and speed, please. We are being watched and monitored by the public, and that's your public, our public, the public, and repetition and rambling are not appreciated in this virtual chamber, nor in the public view. Uh, as we enter the second year of this administration, I'd like to say uh, that I have welcomed over the last year the, the new practice of member maiden speeches. We've all learned a great deal about the characters and backgrounds and the views of our, of our colleagues. Uh, in 2011, when about 10 to 12 of us were first selected, this was not the case. Uh, I wish it had been. Uh, then I would have made the point that as a councillor, uh, I represent the electorate in my ward of Dovedale and Parwich of, of eight villages, namely Allsop, Biggin, Fenny Bentley, Heathcote, Mappleton, Parwich, Thorpe and Tissington. And uh, I do my best here to, to represent uh, those living and working in these wonderful villages in a wonderful part of the world that we're all so lucky to represent and live in. Uh, so I will work in this forthcoming year to support our excellent officers, which I'm sure you'll all agree. And as we all do, I'll try my best for the residents and businesses and organisations in the Derbyshire Dales. Thank you. Moving on to election of vice chairman for the year 20. 21, can I have nominations, please? Councillor Purdy. Sorry, Councillor Finesse, I beg your pardon. Yes, I'd like to nominate Councillor Shirley. He stood in quite a few times and done a good job. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Froggart. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to second this uh, because, again, he, he has done a very, very good job over the last few years. Thank you. OK, so we have a mover and second. Are there any other nominations? I've got Councillor Buttle. Did you want to speak now? Uh, yes, please. I, I'd quite like to nominate Councillor Wayne. Right. Does that find a seconder? I'd second that, yeah. Okay. So um, 
Uh, at this stage, I could ask for any further nominations. Are there any further nominations? No. So I believe now, and Sandra, you'll have to hold my hand on this one. When we have this, uh, Jackie will take a vote for either Shirley or Wayne. I believe that, right, is, the, that is the procedure. So yeah. if we, Jackie's furiously probably making two columns uh, for Shirley or Wayne. And I'll ask Jackie to take the vote on this. If you could all uh, announce uh, the name of your candidate, Shirley or Wayne, uh, in uh, the clearest voice you have. I'll move over to Jackie. Uh, right. Uh, Councillor Allison. Wayne. Archer. See, yeah. you're not here yet. Um, Atkin. Uh, for Shirley. Right. Shirley. Buckler. Wayne. Bull. Shirley. Martin Barefoot. Wayne. Sue Burfoot. Wayne. Buttle. Wayne. Chapman. Shirley. Donnelly. Shirley. Elliot. Shirley. Fitzherbert. Shirley. Flitter. Wayne. Roggett. Shirley. Vanessa. <clears throat> Councillor Finesse. Somebody's him. muted me again. Shirley. Gamble. Wayne. Hill. Shirley. Robson. Shirley. Hughes. Wayne. Please. Shirley. Tony Morley. Shirley. Michelle Morley. Shirley. O'Brien. Wayne. Birdie. Shirley. Ratcliffe. Wayne. Um, Councillor Shirley. Shirley. Black. Oh, he's not here. Statham. Shirley. Sutton. Shirley. Um, Swindle. Councillor Swindle. Colin, are you there? I'm back. Yeah, I don't know where I went then. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm abstaining as an independent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Councillor Wayne? I'm going to abstain. Thank you. And Wakeman? Shirley. That's 19 in favour of Shirley, 10 for Wayne and two abstentions. Thank you very much, there, by uh, Councillor Shirley is elected as the Vice Chairman for the year 2020-2021. Uh, moving on to item four on our agenda, it's the election of the Civic Chairman 2020-21, a proposal at the moment the Council be appointed the position of Civic Chairman uh, with, uh, with seconding and supporting speeches. Can I go to Councillor Tony Morley, please? Uh, hold on, Tony. Unmute. Hold on. Yes, I should like to propose Councillor Helen Froggart, who has done a fabulous job in this last year and will be and has been a credit to all of us and each of the residents of the Derbyshire Dales. That's Helen Froggart. Councillor Subal. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I would like to second the nomination of Councillor Helen Froggart to take over the chairman of the, the civic chairman for this year. Thank you. Does that find any other nominations? Lovely. Then can we go? Do we need a, a vote on this one? Yes, I'm sure. Um, Jackie. Okay. Councillor Allison. I'll stay. Archer, not here yet. Um, Atkin? Four, Froggart. Bright? Four, Froggart. Buckler? Abstain. Bull? Four. Burfoot, Martin Burfoot? Four. 
Two barefoot. Four. Battle. I'm sorry about that. Four. Chapman. Four. Donnelly. Four. Elliot. Four. Fitzherbert. Four. Litter. Four. Roggett. Four. Vaness. Four. Campbell. Abstain. Hill. Four. Hobson. Four. Hughes. Four. Please. Four. Tony Morley. Four. Joel Morley. Four. O'Brien. Councillor O'Brien. Councillor O'Brien. Uh, he's he, uh, he's. I think Councillor O'Brien's frozen out at the moment. He's frozen out. Oh, where's he gone now? Councillor O'Brien. We'll have to continue. Mm. Um, Councillor Purdy. Four. Ratcliffe. Four. R raw. Oh, sorry, raw rose salt. Shirley. Four. Black. Four. Statham. Four. Button. Four. Swindle. Four. Wayne. Four. Wakeman. <coughs> Four. Councillor O'Brien seems to be back unfrozen. Yeah. Councillor I'm four now. Thank you. So that's um, carried with two abstentions. Carried with two abstentions. Thank you very much. So Councillor Froggart is elected as our civic chairman no. for the forthcoming... You've cast the abstentions oh. at three, three Sorry, three abstentions. abstentions. Thank, you. So, thank you. Um, uh, so Councillor Froggart, would you like to make a speech? Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Members. Uh, I'll keep it very brief. Uh, I just want to say what an honour it is to, to be given this opportunity and I will hope that I can fill uh, Councillor Morley's very, very large shoes. Um, and I'd just like to say that my charity for the year, although a very short year, will be the National Hereditary Breast Cancer Helpline because I think it's something that's touched several of the members um, so that is my charity, and I just want to say thank you very much. Thank you. And I think you've got your chain of office to put on. I certainly have. I'm sorry you have to do it yourself in this virtual world. It's all right. And there's no photographer in the room, is there? No. <laughs> right, OK. Thank you very much. And I think that's thank a you. sort of virtual round of applause. OK. Um, and... Uh, you're going to give a vote of. Oh, that's. <laughs> I'm going to give a. Uh, uh, you're going to say a few words about the retiring civic chairman. I certainly am. Uh, I just want to say a huge thank you to Councillor Morley because he's passed on to me several um, events that to cover, which has been a great help in showing me how this uh, role pans out. So I would just like to say a huge thanks to Councillor Morley and to Councillor Mrs Morley, who of course, in supporting him, supported me as well. And I'd just like to say thank you again. Right, lovely, thank you. Thank you very much and congratulations from us all. Um, uh, item five, the appointment of the, the Deputy Civic Chairman for 2020-21. And I think I've got Councillor Martin Burford. Councillor Martin Burford, please. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I'm delighted to propose, propose Councillor Steve Wayne as Vice Chair. You'll be an ideal representative of this council, having an intimate knowledge of the Dales and not just Matlock. People find him very personable and easy to converse with and without being confrontational. And Sue's asked me to add, he's just a nice man. Steve has proved to be a, ex a perfect example of a local councillor on both Matlock Town and the District Council over the last 15 months, having a forensic and analytical understanding of issues and situations facing residents and able to articulate, articulate complex matters in a straightforward way. Therefore, I have no hesitation in proposing 
Steve as vice chair of the council, civic vice chair of the council of the council. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bustle. Councillor Bottle, where are you? I've lost you. Um, Neil, I'll you start there? again. Yes, I'll please. Again. Uh, I'd like to second Councillor Wayne for the Deputy Chair Thank role. Um, during my time here at Derbyshire Dales, I've been impressed by his natural gravitas. Councillor Wayne brings everything brings to everything he does. I'm confident there will be a credit to our institution and the district as a whole. He has my wholehearted support. So thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Do we have any other nominations? None are listed. Thank you very much. I think we go to the vote now, please, uh, Jackie, on, on this one for Councillor Wayne. Councillor Allison. Or Archer. Um, Atkin. Or. Bright. Or. Buckler. Uh, Paul. Paul. Or. Martin Barefoot. Or. Two barefoot. Four. Buttle. Four. Chapman. Four. Donnelly. Four. Elliot. Four. Fitzherbert. Four. Litter. Four. Roggett. Four. Vaness. Four. Gamble. Four. Hill. Four. Hobson. Four. Hughes. Four. Lees. Four. Tony Morley. Four. Michelle Morley. Four. O'Brien. Four. Purdy. Four. Ratcliffe. Four. Raw. Uh, Shirley. Four. Flat. Four. Statham. Four. Sutton. Four. Swindle. Four. Wayne. Four. Wakeman. Four. Can I go back to Councillor Salt, please? We missed him out. He's back in the room. Thank you. Four. Four. Thank you. And that's unanimous, Chair. Thank you very much. Well, congratulations, Councillor Wayne. And as if by magic, would you like to accept your chain of office and make, uh, say a few words, please, Councillor Wayne? My virtual chain. <laughs> oh, just hang on. <laughs> I didn't practice this bit. Thank you. Um, Councillor Burfoot um, and Councillor Buttle, thank you for proposing and setting me for this role. Uh, members of the Council, thank you for giving me the opportunity to act as Deputy Civic Chairman of our wonderful, wonderful district. It will be an honour to undertake this role and support Councillor Froggett in the role as Chair. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much. And a virtual round of congratulations. Brilliant, brilliant. OK, moving on. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, item six is the leader's announcements. Uh, Councillor Purdy, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, before I come to leader's announcement, I'd just like to wish well Councillor Ellen Froggart in her year uh, as full Civic Chairman uh, and wish Councillor Wayne uh, well in his year as, as Deputy. Uh, I'd just like to remind uh, you all, older members will know what I'm going to say, that this was a gift from when Councillor Lewis Rose was leader of the council in sharing out these uh, honourable positions um, with no political bias, just uh, as a, a measure of trying to work together as we call it one team now. And then before those days, it was just a matter of saying, look, we've got the lead, but we want to share this out. And I think that hopefully that can be honoured throughout the rest of this evening in time on a tradition. So I wish you both well. So my leaders announcement, Chairman, are one, a new Derbyshire Health Outbreak Board has been set up in the event that Derbyshire suffers an outbreak similar to Leicester. It is to be hoped that no action is required in such an event, but please be assured that preparations and plans are in place with a strong message still for people to play their part, re-social distancing and washing hands, etc. The Derbyshire Economic Recovery Board meets on a regular basis and plans are well prepared with target action to help stimulate the Derbyshire economy. Unfortunately, Derbyshire Dales figures high in the stats as a real concern for the job market, 
given the fact that we are essentially a tourist based area. Tourist operators such as the Ice of Abraham who have re opened recently, but only at 20% capacity, expressed their concern at the market picking up due to low confidence. And factors in the public domain, such as no good public transport system and coach operator links not yet up to speed to help bring the necessary custom. I'm aware that meetings are gonna be held with Councillor Lewis at Derbyshire County Council uh, and other leaders to try and resolve this public confidence and transport issue. Uh, last Monday, Derbyshire County Council announced a 50 million pound pot of monies to help with the economic recovery, which involves targeting a number of key areas. No doubt more monies will be required in this regard, uh, and we're still investigating uh, the detail of that. At my first leader's announcement in May of last year, I stated that I was making the search for permanent traveller site a top priority. Whilst it has been a bit of a bumpy ride, since then I am pleased to announce that we are very near to that goal. Tim is preparing an agenda paper for a special council meeting, full council meeting, which will be announced soon when members will be given the option of sites to decide upon for a permanent traveller site. For obvious reasons, I'm not prepared to disclose or discuss those sites at the present time. And modestly, I would just add uh, that when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Purdy. Moving on to item seven, approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. I so move. Who does that find a seconder? Second, Chair, Councillor Atkin. It's Councillor Atkin. Uh, can you just show your hands on this one, please? All in favour? I take that as approved. Thank you very much. Item eight is interest. Uh, Sandra and I have had an untabled prior to uh, this meeting, so I take it no further interest there. Thank you. Uh, okay, item nine, a responsibility for functions and revisions to the council's constitution. Uh, Sandra, please. Thank you, Chairman. So as this is the annual meeting, one of its primary purposes is to look at the constitution, make any necessary amendments, and to set out in stone how you intend to make decisions and where responsibility lies. I have a particular role in the constitution to review the effectiveness of it, so I prepared a paper to the recent leaders advisory group on some things that you may wish to consider. And they're here now for determination. Um, the decision making structure isn't much changed from what we've seen in the past. Um, you'll see the resurrection of a local plan working group, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, but basically, there are several strands to this. One of them is in response to the recent, recent peer review where we're asked to look at speeding up decision making. And giving that some thought and being the learning organization that we are, I've reflected on recent practice and I'm proposing a different method for you to make major significant policy decisions. Currently, as the constitution stands, each policy committee will deal with areas within its remit and it will make recommendations to council as the sovereign body on any changes to policy, any adoption of new or any cessation of policy. That has its benefits, but it also has major down to, uh, disadvantages in terms of time and risk and certainty for the council moving forward. So what is proposed in the report is a reversal of this. And what you'll see is that all the reserved powers that only council can undertake are now firmly set out in the constitution. And the suggestion is that only council makes decisions on the introduction of new policy amendment or uh, deletion of policy. There are several benefits to this, and I think we can all reflect on the success of the recent waste re and recycling contract, where it was possible in the constitution for the policy committee to deal with that and then refer it upwards. But when you're dealing with major policy like this, every single councillor should have a stake in it. Their opinion should be heard and we should have a platform to hear it without any introducing any contractual or other delays into the matter. So what I'm suggesting is that any introduction of policy goes first of all to council. What you'll get from your um, corporate leadership team is a robust business case 
They will do all the risk assessments for you, look at any options that you need to consider, and it will go to council at the first opportunity. All councillors will then be able to develop um, a more intimate knowledge of the subject matter, be able to have their say, reflect on how it impacts on their community before making a decision. But it'll be at such a high level that once it's made, it will be cast in stone. There will be no turning back, no delays. The policy committee will then have the job of implementing that policy, reviewing it, introducing performance measures, and it will also enable um, the council to perhaps delegate more to office in terms of making it done. But what council will have is the certainty that whatever shape and form of policy it has dictated cannot be changed by a policy committee. And I think we've had a couple of recent examples in hindsight where we might have benefited from this approach. Um, Rob Coggins brought you a, an innovative paper on housing and becoming um, a, a social landlord again. He came to CLT with that and we, we gave a bit of a hard time because that's what we do. We want it to be as refined as possible before it comes to one of the committees. It then went to the commercial board, it went to a policy committee and finally on to council. And to continue with that with major policy, as I say, can introduce significant risk to the council because nothing is certain until the final countdown where all 39 members have their say. We also have climate change as an initiative. And if you just look without any form of criticism implied at all, other than in a constructive way, if the motion to council had been accompanied by a set of outcomes, what we were trying to achieve, council would know exactly what was meant by that motion in terms of outputs. There will be clear expectations for the task group to then have a clearer path to deliver. Councillor Purdy's also talked about a traveller site to give you another example of how this would work in practice. When we come to identify a site for a permanent traveller site, that's a major point of principle. And I believe that every single member of this council has a stake in where that should be. They have an opinion. It shouldn't be parochial. It should be making the best decision in the interests of the council. And that kind of decision rests with council itself. It's too important to put to a policy committee. But when council makes that decision on the point of principle, it then opens up the door for matters of management and what the design of that particular site looks like to become more operational matters and hence speed up decision making. So this change replicates what many other authorities do and they stick to the letter of the law and only those matters that council can decide on, it does. It doesn't frustrate it by passing it on to another body. Um, it deals with matters head on with the benefit of the entire council being actively involved where you can have ownership of significant issues and wear your political hats. That's what you're here for in shaping policy, um, not only for your constituents, but also delivering on your, on your ambition as a political being. So I've given some of the benefits there of that perhaps change in approach. Obviously, we've had some very lengthy council meetings, so there needs to be a compromise. So we'll be, we'll be taking off council agenda, anything that isn't part of the reserve powers, and some of those items will be going to the policy committees. So you'll see a slight change in the definition of what each policy committee does. Governance and resources, for example, is described as the finance committee because they are uh, matters that need a greater deal of scrutiny than council can afford, but the actual budget has to be reserved to council. So any financial monitoring can be done by the policy committee and not by council itself. And you'll see in the papers accompanying the report how we've refreshed the wording to reflect our new corporate plan. I'm not expecting a raft of new policy, so I don't expect that council will be overburdened um, with new policy changes. But what we're doing is setting a blueprint for the future and setting a stall out in what policy is and who's expected to deal with it. There's also a recommendation here to delete the commercial board from the decision making structure. And I think hindsight, again, is a wonderful tool. It was perhaps a bit premature to create the board without a clear understanding of what commercialisation means to the authority. There is the potential to mainstream commercialisation and for it to be a major thrust of this council. 
And to do that, what we're suggesting is, is that Paul Wilson, the chief exec, hosts a seminar or workshop with you, possibly in September, where perhaps you can all be in the same room and chew over some of these issues and just define what commercialisation means to this council so that we can refine wording for the policy committees. We can start incorporating it into performance plans so senior managers are acutely aware of what commercialisation means and they can carry that banner forward for you. Um, there's then the introduction of the local plan advisory group. Strictly speaking, this is an advisory committee, but we're calling it a group so that you have a clear understanding of what that group is intended to do. It's not a decision maker. Only council can appoint, can approve the local plan. It's a reserved power. So when it comes to approving the local plan, council itself will make this decision and all members of the council will be able to have an input in, into individual recommendations that make up the local plan. But there are options and alternatives that you want to discuss and those will go to the local plan group and they will make recommendations as opposed to decisions for council to determine. And then finally, uh, we wouldn't be anywhere without speeding up some decision makings and, and make routine matters a delegation to officers. And I will need to make some minor amendments moving forward. But I would like you to understand in terms of good corporate governance, what delegation to officer means. These are the routine matters that officers feel comfortable in making without being fettered by an instruction or overbearing consultation of ward members. But you also have to trust your officers to understand, and they do, that some of these decisions they will not make if they believe that they are matters that are so contentious or significant by nature that a council committee or whatever should rightly make those kind of decisions. Now, we have to document all of those that exist for more than six months and they're in the report. Um, and I'll get through the other two items before, unfortunately, I have to take you through a couple of pages just to make a couple of corrections. Contract standing orders is a blueprint on how we conduct business and contract with other bodies. We have to approve them every year and no changes have been made to contract standing orders other than to increase thresholds in accordance with legislation and where particular um, models of procurement have to follow to keep within the letter of the law. Financial regulations are operational matters um, which are in the gift of officers through delegation and they have to mirror the, the provisions in the contract standing orders. And Karen Henriksen as your section 151 officer, your chief financial officer, who has personal responsibility for some of these elements. They're not um, discharged to council. She has quite a heavy load of personal responsibility She's suggesting some amendments here. Um, one thing that I just make, like to make clear is in some of the write-offs, what Karen's delegate authority will enable her to do is write things off for financial accounting purposes. That's not absolving anyone of the debt. Council tax debts and NNDR, for example, can't be written off by the, from the recipient, but they do have to be written off in terms of the financial accounts. And as Karen is your Section 151 officer, she's qualified to do that. There is a distinct difference in write-offs when it comes to major contractual matters, for example, Section 106 agreements and planning obligations, where there was a clear contractual obligation to pay a sum of money. In my view, that is not included in this element of write-off because an element of discretion is required and they would come to the appropriate committee for determination. So that's a quick click through, Chairman, and if you don't uh, mind, I just need to click through a couple of pages to make some amendments to the delegation. And the main ones are in um, governance and resources, and they relate to land transactions and assets of community value. So if I could take you to page 57 um, on the delegation list, um, these amendments were proposed by Tim Braun in preparation for the agenda and they've been missed off. So at the top of page seven, where you have to grant licences, I'd like to add the words or enter into. So it would read to grant or enter into licences, etc. 
Similarly, the second one down, to grant or obtain or enter into easements. And the third amendment would be on the next bullet down, to approve the sale or purchase of land. And that's to Mike Goldsworthy, our estates and facilities manager, who is our registered valuer and is technically competent in order to do that. And then on the assets of community value, um, which turning backwards is on page 52, um, I just need to delete in the first to determine nominations. That should just be to the director of regulatory services with the director of community services in reverse. So those two post holders need to be just transversed to just transpose them over for responsibility. And on the second bullet point on the review, to delete the director of regulatory services. That was an error, Chair. So I think that's all in the delegation and setting the scene in terms of how you conduct your business and happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much, Sandra. I've got one or two, well, six people on my list. Uh, please don't think I've forgotten you. Councillor Purdy first. Thank you, Chair. Well, I'm going to move the recommendation straight away because there's been a lot of work put into this and I'd like to thank Sandra for all that hard work. Um, we're going to come and unfortunately for you, Sandra, talk about you later on, but you're going to leave a lot of legacies and I believe this is one. It's helping to streamline our committees, it's helping to improve our full council uh, administration um, and you know some time ago I asked if there could be more delegation. So I thank you for all this hard work. Other authorities carry this kind of system out and it makes sense. So. I do hope that members uh, go with me on this uh, move to recommend. I do believe there's the next one, and that is that we recommend the council workshop is arranged. That was put out by email, so I think that's in, in the uh, recommendations also. As far as the commercial board, yes, I did give it 12 months because, and as you say, it's hindsight's a wonderful thing. Uh, and we had every good intention when we first started out with the commercial board, but then soon started to realise that we're replicating meetings for meetings sake. And I also think in, in running along with the commercial board, there's a major sense of need for professional expertise in this area. And I have to beg the question, do we councillors have that expertise for commercialism? We can ratify a recommendation, of course, but I would hope that that would come from an expert source. I'm aware that there are local authorities in the country now who have had their fingers seriously burnt by some of their commercialization and are in deep trouble for it. Uh, and, you know, you can think about airports and that kind of thing. So I move the recommendation, Chair. I hope the members support it. Um, and it'll be a good lasting legacy for Sander that we make a more streamlined service to our committees and full council. Councillor Hobson. Chair, I'm, I'm happy to second the motion. Thanks, Sandra, for all her hard work in preparing this, uh, this paper. Uh, this paper, if quite rightly, puts major decisions in the hands of the full council. Everyone at the table will have their say and full council will be the master of all the policy. Um, I agree that every single councillor should have an input into all our policies. Um, thank you also, Sandra, for just explaining and clarifying a few points at the end. I know there have been various questions from councillors. Uh, so thank you for just clarifying those points. Happy to second the motion. Councillor Flitter, please. Thank you, Chair. Well, I don't have a problem with this. Um, I think it's a new way of working. Um, I think it's up to the councillors to uh, make a success of it. Um, and I certainly do agree that all members should be a part of defining council policy. Um, and I'm, I was interested to hear what uh, Sandra said about the principle. Um, so I've got two issues that I really want assurance of. One is uh, that I really want to be assured that members will have an input somewhere along the line before CLT take it to council. Because I think there'd be a lot of unnecessary to and fro if we don't have that input. And I'm not talking just about a 30 minute or a, an hour before a council meeting where it's been to be proposed, but I'm talking about a full workshop uh, so that we can debate it and uh, know why officers are going in a certain direction. And the other side of it is 
when we get to committees, that it's, that it's been charged down to committee, um, we're talking about discussing options for staff to expedite any decisions. But what if those options haven't been uh, discussed by the CLT and at council um, and they don't fit within that overall principle? What happens to it then? Because what I don't want to see is that uh, we, we are going back to the old days where, you know, we're trying to delay things. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Sandra, did you want to okay. answer? Yeah, I'll try and answer those. Okay. Um, I think now that we've got our corporate plan, that's our blueprint and what our priorities are. Those priorities also dictate the finance that's allocated to it. And what CLT does is attempt to programme work. You've got, you set the priorities. Each year we'll tell you what those priorities are from our perspective, you approve them. You give us our action plan moving forward. So council would look at a corporate plan, it would look at its priorities, it would dictate the action moving forward. But CLT's role is making sure that they're achievable and deliverable and giving you options before you come here. So it's, it's the starting block for you to make the important decisions on. And workshops, in hindsight, are one of the vehicles for you to have that level of understanding. CLT is one of the building blocks that works on your priorities to move it onto the starting block for you to discuss. And then we're, so it's about lining the ducks in order. And your starting point is always the corporate plan and where your priorities are. And we spent a lot of time last year and working out what, what they are. And obviously you've agreed some targets moving forward. For example, the, the number of affordable homes that you're wanting to produce. So we know what we're expected to do. So CLT's role is about refining that, advising where we're on track and where we're not, and if there are any options for those to be made by council. Um, the policy committees cannot do anything other than what council has determined, but if something looks like it's going off track, it will need to report back to its master and say, you agreed this, it's not deliverable, we need to change the policy. So that would be a loop back, but it would have a reason for it rather than just as a matter of course. So the policy committee, as I see it, will be um, the administrator, should we say, of all action. And not everything will always go on track, but any deviation will be made by council itself. Nothing will go underhand without full council's knowledge. If I okay. explain that properly. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Ratcliffe. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I, I have some general agreement with the recommendations that are being put forward, but I want to make a little bit more exploration and perhaps major on recommendation three. And now, just as an opening comment, as it were, I, I, I'm also happy with streaming, streamlining the uh, working and governance of the council, but certainly not at the expense of emasculating member involvement. And I am unhappy with uh, Councillor Purdy's uh, comment, if I heard it correctly, that he would um, wish there to be more officer delegation. Uh, it seems to me that, you know, this is a road that if it is trodden, uh, untrammeled, uh, uh, without restraint, will start to take away uh, the responsibilities for overseeing uh, uh, and uh, 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 approving um, uh, uh, decisions. It will start to dilute our own uh, decision making, uh, in, in my view. Uh, I, I'm happy with, uh, largely with the changes to the policy and, and council working. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd like, uh, of course, to, to know exactly what our uh, major uh, policies uh, uh, in, in advance, of course, uh, and 
I would certainly agree that workshop discussion, discussion uh, beforehand uh, would be of benefit. Uh, I, I'm still uh, unconvinced uh, that this Zoom format for debate is the right one when it comes to, to, to that uh, sort of decision uh, making. We're too limited, in my view, in our interactive uh, debating uh, on this, uh, in, in this particular way. But I want to, as I said, say uh, major on uh, recommendation three, and in particular, uh, the changes to uh, B7 and B8 of the financial regulations. Now, despite what Sandra has said, and I listen very closely to her, uh, uh, and uh, I, I bow to her far greater uh, expertise and, and, and knowledge here, as it were, uh, it seems to me there are some difficulties in the wording that we have been presented with. Um, to delegate authority to the Director of Re Resources to write off any debt seems to me somewhat ambiguous. It seems to suggest that there will be no limit. Uh, now, of course, uh, has, has been pointed out, uh, there will be probable limits, certainly when it comes to uh, debts that are accrued within areas like 106 payments. Uh, currently, we're on uh, uh, debts uh, up to 1500, uh, as I understand, uh, which are delegated. I took part, incidentally, in the debates and decision over the 59K uh, uh, write-off that, that uh, did pertain to a 106 agreement. Uh, and uh, that took some time to agree uh, and uh, uh, indeed was subject to quite intensive uh, review. However, it does seem to me that um, what we need here is some sort of predetermined limit that is set by the council itself in advance, rather than this, to my mind, uh, suggestion of, of open-endedness. Uh, uh, and I would like to suggest, in fact, that there is some clause here that does, as it were, suggests that uh, the council itself is going to have more control. And by the council, I mean uh, the members uh, 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 as much as anyone else, rather than putting it into the hands of a single officer. Uh, because although I've got extremely high regard for uh, Karen, I do know, of course, that uh, like Sandra, uh, that she won't be with us forevermore, but it's quite possible that these regulations will exist uh, for some time. Can I ask Sandra to respond or? Yeah, um, I kind of might want to uh, ask Karen to come in, but my question would be, would this be better if it was more clearly defined because I think there is a difference between debts which are written off for financial purposes as opposed to those that are written off in their entirety which needs a bit of discretion. Um, I need to defer at Karen at this point as to whether that can be made rather than putting a financial limit on it where you might find an otherwise routine matter coming to you. I'm just wondering if there's a better way of defining it so you know what the exclusions are. If we could ask Karen to come in at that point, please. Yeah, yes, but if I'll, I'll just very quickly respond. Yeah, very quickly, I, please. You, you have it exactly, Sandra. Mm -hmm. It needs clarity. Okay. Uh, uh, absolutely, uh, I, yeah. I, I, I feel. Yeah. Um, I think the issue here is that um, the effect of um, authorising the write-off is that no no further recovery action would be taken. Um, so it could be reinstated if more, if more um, evidence comes to light, for example, the whereabouts of um, a 
a debtor who's um, left the district without trace, um, the debt could be reinstated. Um, but generally, once a debt's written off, unless new information comes to light, um, recovery does cease. Okay, thank you. Uh, what I have said yeah. and what Sandra reiterated is that um, we don't always have to use the discretion. Um, and if there was anything contentious or, or unusually large, uh, then I would bring that to members' attention. Okay, thank you very much. I've got several other people who, who want to speak. Uh, Councillor Gamble, please. Hi, oh, thanks. Um, I, I like Mark. I, I welcome overall the intention of these changes, and I think they're changes that have been in the making for a while, and I'm hoping that they'll make it towards a more modern um, um, council in the way we work. It's just a couple of things, really, on the detail. I mean, it says in the work that... that Functions will be discharged to policy committees, and we're also talking about commercialisation going through the policy committees. Um, I'm just wondering if, if we agree to taking policy committees to every eight weeks, we're stuck with that. We can't move from that. If we kept with the eight weeks, we've got a couple of new functions that are to come into policy committees. That would give us a bit more room to actually stick with those meetings that are right, or we can always reduce meetings, but once we set them in stone at six, we can't increase them if the workload does increase on these policy committees in line with these um, functions that are going to be discharged and this, these new moves to commercialisation. And also, can I strain, can I also, in the, in the way we're going to move to these new, new methods, can, one, can I ask that one thing that happens is that when we get given reports, what I understand is a lot of other councils, it is very standard for there to be options and there to be argued options so that members can look at them and make a reasoned decision on the, because it's all very well saying the corporate plan. The corporate plan is a few marketing words. It's not really a detailed blueprint for everything the council's going to do. And as such as any document like that, it's open to interpretation. And the interpretation of officers may not be the same as the interpretation of members. And, and I hope that when things come forward, that hopefully reports would reflect that. Um, then also, um, just to, again, the I know we had in the initial report said we were going to have a commercial workshop prior to September. Obviously, someone realised then we weren't having a meeting in September. But I think the word prior to a meeting... I mean, that would mean anything between now and time infinitum. <laughs> the end of the council would be a workshop before the meeting. I think, could we have that tied down a little bit more? And okay. also, I'm just asking, I want to ask another question as well. What actually it is thought that this workshop will achieve when already tonight we are going to put commercialisation in the hand of two co policy committees, which to, a, which to a large extent define what happens with commercialisation. And, and also, I just wonder if business cases will be speeded up by putting them through a policy committee. It means any business's case is going to have to go through a policy before it comes through to main committee, I presume. Okay. Um, and then, I'm reduced, I've got no more questions. Um, yeah. So I mean, we talk about speeding up, but in this case, are we going from glacial to tortoise? And also, another question I'd like to know, um, when was the climate change group defined as a group making recommendations to full council? I'd like to know who made that decision and when. And also... Excuse me, Councillor Gamble, I think, I think you've, got, you've got about five or six questions there, which is, I think, plenty. And if you did have these, if you could have presented them before, that would have been helpful. Uh, you know, so we could get them down, some, some of the answers on paper. I'd like Sandra to respond, please. Thank you. Okay. Hopefully, I'm, uh, <laughs> I can remember them all to uh, do the yeah. note Councillor Gamble will let me know if I've missed one. First of all, on the frequency of meetings of the policy committee, recommending on to eight weeks in terms of a programme of meetings. Uh, the meeting regulations at the moment allow us to add meetings on and cancel them until September next year to give us flexibility to get through this emergency situation. So although we need a programme of meetings for a degree of certainty, that doesn't mean to say that we're stuck with it. We can have special meetings at any time and we can also have ordinary meetings with more than one item on the agenda. So we do have flexibility moving forward. 
Um, in terms of commercialisation, um, you're right, there is an error on uh, the recommendation. I think it needs to be a little bit more open-ended so that a council workshop is arranged prior to a future meeting of council. It is important that you define what commercialisation is so we can add it to the terms of reference of the policy committee. But you'll also see the services that are aligned to each of those policy committees. So if you define commercialisation, for example, Community and Environmental Services, which is in the remit of the Community Environment Committee, will know that its, that its job is to mainstream commercialisation within all activities of that major frontline service. So everything filters down from council through the policy committees at a departmental level. So things will move forward. Um, I don't agree on the corporate plan because I think it is cast in stone as a blueprint for where this council wants to go to. It set its ambition for the next four years and it works to an annual uh, work plan of priorities. They can be changed to reflect uh, changing circumstances, but that's the whole purpose of the corporate plan, to set targets for what you want to achieve and by when. And that's basically the instruction for CLT to develop business cases for the policy framework to take forward. The Climate Change Working Group is a task and finish group and its terms of reference were approved by Council. Okay. Thank, thank I can't you remember much. the date but um, they have been approved that it does need to report back to Council and it needs to report on an action plan, that's one of its primary purposes. Well, can I just talk on that please? Yeah, but yeah. making recommendations is quite different to outlying an, an action plan, isn't it? Yeah, the, the task I group has no decision-making powers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to uh, Councillor O'Brien. Thank you. I've lost you. Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Obviously, a report with uh, far-reaching implications and I suspect more public interest in it than uh, many colleagues may have imagined. Um, and interestingly, I don't recall any mention of the proposed changes to the structure of the council in the corporate plan or, or any service plans. I find the reference to Traveller's site a little puzzling, actually. I, I can understand that it's very sensitive and important, but I thought the policy to establish a site had actually already been agreed by the council via the local plan. So the logic of, of what's in this report would be that the delivery of the, uh, of the site um, or sites would pass to a policy committee, but, but apparently that isn't going to be the case. So it isn't clear to me whether a decision on say the locations for new council housing will be taken by the council or a policy committee. So some clarification there would be helpful. I also think it'd be unfortunate if the function of policy committees becomes that of merely monitoring, because one of the strengths of a committee system is it enables members to develop um, expertise in specific areas for council activities and to bring their own expertise to the table and to have the sort of informed discussion that um, the more rigid format of council meetings doesn't allow. I know there's reference to member working groups, though nothing is formalised in the recommendation. But it was only this time last year, a decision was made to discontinue member participation in the policy hubs. So I think uh, that I found a little bit strange. And speaking personally, as a member of the Climate Change Working Group, I think more thought does need to be given to the terms of reference and responsibilities of such groups. Uh, to be blunt, I guess, how do they relate to the corporate leadership team, uh, the political groups and to the council? But finally, and perhaps most importantly, um, uh, there are our masters, the residents of the Derbyshire Dales. Since the inception of the council, they have had the right and the opportunity to challenge and participate in policy decisions, for both committee and council. Checks and balances are fundamental to effective democracy. And we are a democracy and we're accountable to the public. Now, one of these opportunities is proposed to be removed. Have we asked the public for their opinion? No. 
And ironically, we're taking a decision this evening which affects the democratic rights of the public at a meeting where they're not allowed to speak or ask a question. Now, a different, a different uh, proposed change to the Constitution, which again, the public have not been consulted on, that's the delegation of writing off of debts of whatever value to officers. And we've already seen the consternation that's causing in one community. So consultation is something that council prides itself in and rightly. So I find it very disappointing that it has apparently been ignored on this occasion. Okay, all, all, all that I'm saying here is intended as constructive criticism. But what I would suggest is that we agree to review the impact of recommendations two and three after 12 months, and that this review, this review incorporates sure. the views of the public and I'd like to propose this as an amendment to the proposal. Uh, can we answer the, the questions first? I think that might be helpful. Uh, Sandra, is that possible? Uh, I understand what Councillor O'Brien is saying. There hasn't been any consultation with the public. I think how the council makes decisions is for itself to come to a view on, on what it thinks is, um, a practical way of discharging its functions. I'm not sure that I agree with the merit of public participation on, on this and what, what value it would bring. On the traveller issue, I do agree that it is a principle in the local plan that we will deliver on a site, but I think the principle of the traveller site is so important that all members of this council should, should make it. It's highly emotive and it risks being parochial at a very smaller level at a, at a committee. I think all members should have an active stake in it. We need to do it and we need to do it right. And I think it rightly belongs in the remit of the council. Um, I'm not sure whether we can make an amendment in the terms that you described, Councillor O'Brien, but each annual meeting, you have a duty to review your constitution and the effectiveness of it. So it's an inbuilt mechanism to enable you to look backwards in 12 months time in seeing how effective the constitution was in delivering on your objectives and making any changes that you think are necessary. Uh, I'll give you a quick right of reply, Councillor O'Brien. Well, thank you, Sandra. Uh, I, I do think it would be helpful to everybody um, in preparing for next year's annual meeting that there's an understanding that we do undertake a review of these very significant changes to our constitution. That's, that's my purpose in putting forward this as a formal amendment is not to be constructive, but just so that both ourselves and the public, uh, who as you say, we've not consulted on this, they do know that they, that, that we'll be reviewing these major changes uh, next year. And that, that review will be uh, part of uh, next year's report to our annual meeting. Uh, the question would be, would be to sorry. say that subject to review at the next annual meeting and then agree points one, one to five, if that would be useful. Well, I'm, I'm asking for the views of colleagues. That would be my suggestion. That well, we just OK, well, let, shall we go on and, and continue the debate? We've got, I've got plenty of people who want to, to, to talk, please. Councillor Hughes I've got next, then Martin Burford. Councillor Hughes. Thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, I, I also welcome the proposed changes and I think they will improve effectiveness of decision making. So I take Councillor O'Brien's point and, and the need possible for, possibly for review. Uh, I agree with Councillor Flitter that discussion on major proposals should be undertaken sometime before they are presented to Council so that views and alternative proposals from members can be considered properly by officers. Our experience, I think, in the, in, in the uh, corporate plan would suggest that uh, things can be improved by su in such workshops and, and I think uh, everybody uh, that I talked to about the corporate plan uh, indicated that that was so. Turning to commercialization, I agree with uh, Councillor Purdy's comments on the need for professional support. Um, I welcome the, the, the fact that commercialization will, uh, proposals will come before full council um, and I hope that the, those uh, proposals will be uh, discussed, uh, it will be possible to discuss those commercialization proposals beforehand. Therefore, I've asked two, two questions of Sandra. Will it be possible to, um, to, to have workshops uh, about 
commercialization proposals beforehand and uh, will council be will the officers be creating a pipeline of commercialization proposals that can be maintained and um, given uh, and with, with for which members can have sight um, as it develops and as it changes uh, this would help members um, uh, research and come to their own views about particular commercialization proposals independent of of the officers thank you is that not the point of the, the workshop Sandra I'm, I'm... it is chair the first step I think is for you to define what commercialization is in the report I've given you a couple of examples I think in the commercial board that we had we we, we, we featured on assets we're not an asset rich authority there's not a lot to be gained by concentrating on that element alone but it could be many other things safeguarding the, the provision of essential services by delivering through a new model generating revenue through trading um, innovative fees and charges generating economies of scale and efficiencies they could all be part of your de definition of commercialization and what would happen then we'd um, implement them within the policy committees, but the service plans that each, uh, each individual service works to would then be able to come up with actions that match that definition of commercialization so everyone can own it. I think that first workshop on what is commercialization and coming up with a set of words and actions that you're happy with is the first step. But I think then you will be able to see more activity coming through your um, senior manager base on reports to committee for you to put that action in place. But we need to know what it looks like and what you want it to feel like, commercialization for Derbyshire Dales. So the first step would be defining it, secondly, embedding it, and thirdly, living it, where every member of staff understands what that means. Chair, okay. can I come back on that? For, uh, uh, very briefly, we've got lots of people. We've got lots of ideas. Yes, yeah. no, it's, it's just a clarification of the questions that I asked, really. The, the um, I wasn't talking about these workshops concerned with setting up a, the, the, the framework. I was uh, for commercialization. I was talking about workshops about commercialization proposals. A lot of these may be very big. Some of them will be quite small, but it would be useful for uh, councillors to be able to discuss those commercialization pre, uh, proposals before they come to council. Um, and also the pipeline uh, of, of um, proposals would enable councillors to be kept up to date and to understand what was coming up in the future. And also it would, it would form a good basis for commercialization. A commercialization where ideas just pop, in, pop up is not, would be uh, difficult to manage. Whereas pi a pipeline of proposals, it would be possible to um, <laughs> bring in the, right, the necessary professional support and so on, and to uh, manage uh, officers' time in developing those proposals and therefore is something that would help with the management of the council. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so I didn't make that clear. Um, you, would, you would expect to have uh, workshops as an only significant piece of work. But if you see commercialization as the beginning of the golden thread, that begins a new plan, that goes through the service plans where officers commit to delivering on certain work, and the significant ones will come to you by workshops, but you will see the pipeline with the golden thread through the corporate plan into the actual performance plans, which you have input in and be able to monitor and direct. Okay, okay thank, thank you. Thank you very Councillor Martin Burfoot, please. Yes, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, I agree with um, what uh, Councillor Flitter and uh, Councillor O'Brien and Councillor Hughes have said largely. I'd also like to congratulate Sandra on producing such a, uh, of putting in such a, such a large amount of work in producing this report. But um, my, my attention is drawn to page seven, particularly, and uh, on the climate change, the paragraphs on climate change, largely on, on new traveller site. I'm somewhat bemused uh, by what's been said, certainly by Councillor Purdy, about uh, a new traveller site being voted on ABLC or whatever by uh, a full council meeting. Um, so bringing that together with climate change and the need to um, consult with the public on an action plan, for instance. Um, I, I wonder how that's going to come about, uh, but particularly with the traveller site, are we going to be voting on the traveller site without any um, previous uh, or prior warning to the public, uh, 
in other words, through public consultation or full members and or appropriate ward members, perhaps, where the sites are located, uh, so that we have some idea of, as with the planning application, of, of what uh, member or public views might be. And with the action plan, likewise, uh, various interest groups, so um, certainly Extinction Rebellion and other groups that are obviously campaigning for um, climate change, what involvement they would have in the action plan. I also agree with Councillor O'Brien, particularly about uh, the need for some sort of review of the clauses on page four, which we're voting for in the recommendations tonight. And uh, you know, when we might uh, undertake a review uh, and actually uh, ascertain whether the what we're voting for is actually uh, successful or needs to be amended in some way. So I'd ask about, certainly about the, the travel site and an action plan for the climate change uh, and how that might be consulted upon. At this stage, Chair, we're talking about the principle of the decision-making framework rather than the traveller site in detail. I think um, yeah. this, this one's not for me to answer at this point. We're putting in place the principle to deal with the matter rather than attempt to deal with the matter now. Okay, thank you very much. I'd like uh, Councillor Michelle Morley. Michelle. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I don't have questions. It's more of a comment, please. Um, I, I too welcome the proposed changes, um, but I do have a, a, a concern that if we consult the public too much, that is going to cause delay. And I think we should be mindful that we do have the YouTube live streaming for those who are interested to watch and keep a watching brief on our activities. And I think we should all be mindful as well that the public voted for us on their behalf to make decisions for the district council. Thank you, Chair. That's the super effort. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, first of all, could I thank Sandra, as usual, for her competency in preparing this report? And can I also say that um, in Karen, we have a very competent director of resources. For anybody in the public that's listening, I suppose um, that's finance to them. I'm not sure people particularly understand director of resources, but that's one of my little uh, comments. But I, I have got huge concerns on page nine, uh, B7 and B8. Um, this is about the change um, in the way that we deal with debt recovery. Um, we, I think we all know that there have been some very large and contentious um, debt recovery problems that that's, that have actually actually caused um, great concern and even anger in some of our communities. And I think it's absolutely crucial that, that when we have these large debts that are contentious, that they should be they should be discussed in in the public arena. I can't agree with Councillor Mrs Morley that um, in what she says about involving the public. Um, I, I personally like to see um, an upper limit of debts that can be written off under delegation. Um, people, the public would see this, I think, for huge debts that are written off as being done behind closed doors. And we are a public authority and we are dealing with money that isn't our money, it's the public's money. We all pay our council tax, or most of us do anyway. And um, if, if, if debts are there, they should be aired in public if they are over a certain limit. Now, I'm not absolutely certain what I would like to see that limit as, but certainly as it is at the moment, I think it's actually unfair to ask Karen to write off debts when when we've already seen large contentious ones being written off and that okay. was done in public so to suddenly decide that we're not going to do it in public is just not democratic uh who'd like to say that sandra or karen it's just i think it needs to revert back to karen um karen. to explain what her yeah. boundaries yeah. are oh. in when she is uncomfortable in making a delegated decision Karen, thank you. Thank you, Chair. 
Um, yes, uh, as I've already stated earlier, um, if there were any contentious large debts, um, then I would um, choose not to exercise that discretion and I would um, report them to um, probably the policy and uh, the governance and resources committee for a decision. Um, the large write-off that has been mentioned earlier for £59,000, um, that one was taken by members of the governance and resources committee. Um, and that's the type of report that I would bring in future. Um, okay. At the end of the day, this is a decision uh, for members. If you're not comfortable with delegating it to me um, and you wish to uh, retain the current financial regulation or retain the current financial regulation with a higher limit, um, then that's for members to decide. If I could come back, Chair, on that Very one, quickly. please. I, I, think, I think the problem is that um, the under B7 and B8, it's, um, it's not really clearly defined, as I think Councillor Ratcliffe said. So what, just, what Karen's just said, I absolutely agree with. But any mm. member of the public looking at this report would not know that that might happen. That, that Karen wouldn't have to make a decision of this magnitude on a huge amount of money. And, and my problem, it, 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 well, it, it is that, um, you know, we need to have this in the public domain and it needs to be made clear in the report that the possibility is there for contentious and large debts to be um, aired in public. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I've got Councillor Slack now. I've lost. Uh, thank oh. you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, I agree with uh, a lot of what's been already said, uh, Chair. Um, one thing I would like to say is that as a councillor, we should always be public accountable and transparent. I don't think we should actually keep things under under the count, as you might say, else public will lose faith in us. Uh, some of these debts have to be brought out in the open and so we can see what's going on. And also, uh, the councillors should always be have the final decision. With some very good officers, I must agree with some really good officers. Sandra has been tremendous, and I'd like to give my full, you know, thank you for all what she's done. But uh, there's Karen, there's Tim, there's Ashley. They're all good officers, and we we do put his faith in them. But we can't expect the officers to take difficult decisions. It's hard our decision to take these difficult decisions because that's why we elected. That's okay. why we elected to make decisions. So I'll finish there, Chair. Thank just you very much. Thank you very much. I'd like, just like uh, to ask now Councillor Purdy to sum up. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Well, I feel like we've gone off piece somewhat on this issue. Um, first of all, Councillor Ratcliffe, there's no intention of removing any serious delegation powers. The question of me to Sandra was, are there any items that could be uh, better delegated uh, and we say we trust our officers so I have implicit faith in what the recommendations are. I think where this comment on the corporate plan it doesn't seem to have settled with some people yet, some members yet, that we have adopted the corporate plan. We've all uh, voted for it and approved it and therefore that is the path we will follow. We have benefited from workshops for a number of years now it started some years ago with, I think, the waste contract. And so I have no problem at all, if necessary, and a benefit to members, that we raise a workshop. The workshop with regard to commercialization, as keeps being stated, is to try and rationalize what we mean by commercialization. So after that workshop, uh, we need to see what steps we take after that. As far as... Um, the debt recovery is concerned. Well, we've got another complaint from uh, somebody in Tansley we well know, who's challenging what was democratically voted for in full open council. And I'm satisfied that our officers have done their level best to recover debt. Uh, and it's not hidden under the counter, as seems to be insinuated tonight, which upsets me. We've always been an open council and transparent and continue to be so. I think, though, where there does seem to be some disquiet about this uh, finance issue, um, I'm just going to test Sandra with, do we need a recommendation for further clarity on this to come back to members? 
uh, if, if there's someone's um, concern in that area, then I'd like to get that sorted. Public consultation, don't see the point, quite frankly. Uh, we're able to make decisions. You're democratically elected. You're the ones that have got the at on. You're the ones that are making the decisions in council. And that's what we're here for. Um, if we went out to public consultation on the traveller site, we won't put them anywhere. It's as simple as that. So I'm sure we're given a clear lead on this. I'd like to think that members stick to the script with this recommendation, with all the hard work that Sanders put in. Uh, you say you trust your officers. Well, please trust them. I think that uh, it, the only question mark I've got, Sandra, is just to bottom out this issue on finance uh, and with Karen. Is there a need to have it uh, with more put, with more clarity and investigated further in, in a part of the recommendations? I think it comes down to a straight line, Chair, whether the council wants to um, continue with an upper limit for the kind of clarity that it requires. Um, I'm confident in terms of our corporate governance framework that officers have a clear understanding of when they need to uh, report to members. I can also understand that there needs a public transparency issue. So I'd ask Karen whether it would help her in her definition as to whether there needs to be an upper limit and for that to be reasonable so that members can understand what the exceptions are. Yeah. Does that I'd answer the question? Karen. Oh, sorry, Karen. Yeah, thank you. Um, in my view, I'd rather have um, a financial limit um, than try to explain the type of exception um, because that's easier to administer and uh, more simple for everybody to understand. Um, if members require an upper limit, we could perhaps, I'd suggest, um, say, £10,000 because that, um, that would coincide with other limits I have for things like environments. Uh, so we could change the um, financial regulation um, to stay the same as current, um, that I would have delegated authority to approve up to write-offs up to £10,000 and any of £10,000 or more would be um, have to be approved by the government, by the government and resources. Um, um, Chair, I'm happy. I'm happy with that uh, recommendation from Karen. As you're, I say. You're, you're happy to incorporate that in, in, into it. it indeed, okay. and I hope members, again, will trust our officer. Uh, that's a, a, a brilliant suggestion, Karen. Thank you for that. I think that will work. OK, thank you. Uh, I'd like to go back to Councillor O'Brien because he's, 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 he's come to me. Uh, can you just repeat? I think, Councillor O'Brien, you'd like to make the amendment that you first commented on that review the impact of recommendations two and three, which are on page four of our papers um, after 12 months, and this review incorporates the views of the public. Now, is that is that correct? That's the amendment I'd like to, it's not a, yes, that's the amendment I'd like to ask for support from colleagues. Um, so I'll just repeat that, uh, uh, that O'Brien, Councillor O'Brien has said that we review uh, the council reviews the impact of recommendations two and three after 12 months and that this review uh, incorporates the views of the public. Uh, is any, do we have a seconder for that? I've got Councillor Martin Burford. Do you want to say anything? Yes, I just, I'm just willing to uh, second that proposal. Okay. I agree with it wholeheartedly. Right. Thank you. Right. So we have an amendment. Yeah. Could I just be pedantic because yeah, it leaves please. a number of recommendations up in the air. Yeah, if okay. anything is subject to review, I'd prefer it to be all of them, because if we're just picking out recommendations two and three, we've lost one, four and five, okay. and the council won't be fulfilling its role in setting its decision-making right. framework. I understand. So okay. I suggest that all of it is subject to review. Um, so, Councillor O'Brien, your... Well, I'm, um, guided, I'm guided by you there, Chair. I have no problem with the other recommendations. Uh, no okay. problem... I have no problem in principle myself with all the recommendations, but I do think, as 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 good governors, we should uh, we should review them after a year to see how effective they are. Right. Okay. So, um, so can I suggest that? Uh, uh, so your okay. It was your. It's your amendment. <laughs> so uh, are you going for all of them or just two and three? 
Better. Well, uh, if, if the advice from uh, officers is that we should review them all, I don't want us to spend time reviewing something which doesn't need reviewing, that's all. But yes, no, if that's... I'd, I'd certainly agree with that. Um, and so, so for clarity, you, your, your amendment is for, for all of them. Well, if, yes, if, however, if we have to put it pedantically, yes. But right, okay. in, the, intent, the intention, okay. should I and say. And we have a, have a seconder in, in Councillor Martin Burford. Do we take this to the vote then, Sandra? Yes, I'm happy with that, yes. Yes, we do, Chair. Okay, so let, let's go for the amendment that's been tabled by Councillor O'Brien, that, um, that we as a council review the impact of all the recommendations, one to five on page four of the report, um, uh, and that this review in the future incorporates the views of the public. So can I now go to uh, Jackie, please? For or against, please, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Um, <clears throat> Councillor Ellison. For. Archer, is he here? No, not here. Uh, Atkin. Against. Wright. Against. Buckler. For. Bull. Against. Martin Burfoot. For. Sue Burfoot. For. Buttle. For. Chapman. Against. Donnelly. Against. Fitzherbert. Against. Litter. Abstain. Abstain. Froggart. Against. Vaness. Against. Gamble. For. Hill. Against. Hobson. Against. Hughes. Abstain. Lees. Against. Um, Tony Morley. Against. Michelle Morley. Against. O'Brien. For. Paul. Um, sorry. Purdy. Against. Ratcliffe. Abstain. Uh, Salt. Against. Shirley. Against. Slack. For. Uh, Statham. Against. Sutton. Against. Swindle. Against. Wayne. Abstain. And Wakeman. Against. So that amendment is not carried. What were the votes, please, I think? I've, I've got 20 against. Yeah. Eight, nine, 10, oh. It's 21, eight, eight four, Jackie. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I can't okay, see so, so, so that, that, that amendment is not carried. Now we go to the substantive motion that's on the table uh, that was, that was um, uh, to, to move uh, item nine, the responsibility for functions and revisions to the council's constitution. Uh, can, we, can we do that vote, please, Jackie? Alison? Abstain. 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 Archer? Uh, Atkin? Paul. Bright? Four. Buckler. Four. Bull. Four. Martin Burfoot. Abstain. Sue Burfoot. Abstain. Buttle. Four. Chapman. Four. Donnelly. Four. Fitzherbert. <coughs> Sorry, four. Uh, Flitter. Four. Froggart. Four. Vaness. Four. Gamble. Upstate. Hill. Four. Hobson. Four. Hughes. Four. Lees. Four. Tony Morley. Four. Michelle Morley. Four. O'Brien. Four. Purdy. Four. Ratcliffe. Four. R uh, Salt. Four. Shirley. Four. Slack. Four. Say them. 
Four. Sutton. Four. Swindle. Four. Wayne. Four. Wakeman. Four. With one, two, three, four abstentions. So that motion is carried. Okay. Uh, could I suggest, sorry, as you probably heard, I had a dog problem just then. Um, uh, can we just take five minutes and return at uh, five to eight minutes for a comfort break? So I know one or two wanted that as well at this stage and return at quarter two, at a quarter two. So uh, 7.45. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We'll just give it one more minute. I can see that Sue Burford isn't there. And one or two others. Let's have a look. Okay, Sue's there. Councillor Gamble, are you there? Just looking on Councillor Gamble, it's now nine, sorry, sorry, it's not, it's 7.45. Um, for those of you, I do apologise for our dogs. Uh, it, it, I don't think it was, um, they weren't listening to the debate, but they heard uh, the um, a delivery uh, come to the door. That's what it was. It wasn't anything to do with our uh, deliberations. Right, Councillor Gamble's back. Great. So, okay, welcome back, everyone. Thank you for that. Item 10 is the appointment of committees and review of political proportionality. Uh, Sandra, please. Thank you, Chair. So this is another annual review process for the Council to make. And we need to reflect political balance within groups in our seats on uh, committees as prescribed by the law. And you'll see a political proportionality table on page 90. As there's been a change in the position from this time last year, in that the Liberal Democrats lost a seat and the Green Independents gained a seat, the mathematics don't actually work perfectly. So we're in a position where the uh, leading group needed to cede a seat to the true independents. They've now come to an agreement. I just need to uh, amend a couple of things on page 94. You'll see a duplication of Andrew Statham. One of those is actually Alison. And Hill. On page 95, you'll see a duplication of Helen Froggart as a member and sub. The sub is Tony Morley. So the council doesn't have any discretion in this matter. All it's required is to give effect to the wishes of the political groups and make appointments to committees as set out in the paperwork. Uh, Councillor Finesse. Sorry, Chair, just a muting. Uh, yes, I'd like to move the recommendation. Uh, there isn't anything really much to discuss here. It's a question of numbers and proportionality, and then just fitting faces to the seats to make the numbers. So, yeah, happy to move it, Chair. Councillor Shirley. I'm happy to second this. Thank you. Councillor Gamble. Uh, I'd just like to ask why, why the report says that the council has three political groups and it doesn't include us as a group. That might be my error, Chair, in duplicating last year's report. Of course, there are four. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, I, I, sorry, and can I ask, in re recognition, is, is, there, is, is this a point to, to put forward the point about that our leader doesn't get the leader's allowance that other leaders get? Will that, is this, a, is this a, a, the point where we should look at that? Or? The Independent Remuneration Panel makes recommendations. I have alerted them to the fact that we do have a new group system and their report is due for determination by council later in the year. It's not something that you can determine yourself, except upon recommendation by the IRP. Okay, Councillor Martin Burford. Yes, Chair, I understand that uh, we've just been told that uh, the Conservative group have to see the seat to the independents. Uh, what is that? We've not been told. It appears on every um, uh, pro forma that's come out about the uh, committees, but uh, we haven't seen, haven't heard who it is at yet and what the position is going to be for whom and also uh, okay. I'm a bit annoyed that I mean we talk about uh, uh, the, the, the council being sorry uh, let Sandra answer that uh, yeah, right, okay. what's your other point please please be brief yeah well I mean we talk about this uh, council being one council and not being too political as Councillor Purdy said but I mean and the, the Ernest Bailey uh, committee in Matlock for instance that uh, meets once a year to give out uh, grants to local organizations uh, because the Conservatives are a minority on that group, and yet uh, the opposition parties aren't allowed to have the chair and vice chair of that committee, which seems a bit odd. It's something that they have had in the past. So I wonder why that is, as every other position seems to be uh, given to the Conservative group with a very small majority overall, of course. And the opposition parties have no say whatever in any of these committees. But I do want to know what the seating of the seat from the Conservatives to the Independents is. Thank you. 
Sorry, I, th I think we both attempted to speak at the same time there, Councillor Berth, but sorry about that. Uh, the seat has been ceded on the Governance and Resources Committee and Councillor Graham Elliott has taken the place previously recommended by Councillor Mark Salt. On the issue of the Ernest Bailey charity, it's part of the trust deed that the members have to come from the former Matlocks, um, hence they are there by name, and we'll get to the chairmanships in the very next report. So this uh, item 10 has been moved and seconded. Can we go to the vote, please? Can I, can I just say, Chairman, I have asked oh, to speak again. I beg your pardon. Steve, do you know how to put your, your hand up? In, yes, I've put it up twice. Uh, I, uh, I beg your pardon. It's Councillor Flitter. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to know, Chair, if at some stage, not possibly tonight, but I'd like to know the mythology of uh, working out the figures for the proportionality. It has been a subject of uh, some discontent within the Lib Dems, uh, and we would like it clarified at some time. Thank you. Of course, of course that's fine. Uh, Councillor Sue Bertha, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm glad that uh, Councillor, I think it was Councillor Gamble, can't remember it was now, who pointed out that there was an error um, on 1.2 in the um, the three political groups and there are actually four and two independent members. Does that mean that the calculations for the allocation of seats is uh, incorrect? That's the first question. And I suppose, as Councillor Fitter says, there has been some discontent amongst the Lib Dems, it, um, especially in terms of the planning committee, um, since before Christmas, um, we've had three Lib Dems on the planning committee and it's it's been considered to be all right for us to have three until now. Um, why is that so? Why 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 is it suddenly changed? Why, why was it all right from before Christmas when we lost a member? Uh, and there, there were always been 13 on the planning committee and, and suddenly we're down to two. So could you explain that, please? Sandra? Just to outline the methodology, um, the Conservatives have a particular group strength which represents percentage of the membership overall, as do all other political groups. The independents, the two independents, while it's not a political group, also have an entitlement overall. So the first step is to work out the group strength in terms of percentage of the number of councillors overall, and we do a quick math math blah, mathematical equation. So if there are 17 members on a committee, the Conservatives and other political groups are entitled to a share of those committees based on their group strength overall. And sometimes this works out perfectly. And then it's quite clear that 1.8 equals two people. Because of the change in dynamics this time, this rounding up and rounding down just doesn't work. It doesn't create a perfect picture. So there is an element of rounding up and rounding down on each of the committees, but then we have to reflect it backwards to the number of seats available on all seats allocated. And that's where some of the complications have arisen, hence the controlling group had to see the seat overall. It is entitled to the majority of seats and in individual committees, but the law also says that each group should be entitled to their share of all seats available by a political proportionality. And just because of the simple dynamics of one person moving from one group to another has changed that mathematical equation in terms of rounding up and rounding down. So whilst there was an error in the text of this report and only saying that there are three um, political groups, I can assure you that that table is correct. Um, if I may come back, Chair, because- Very I think quickly. It is important. So um, I'm still not very clear why we're still OK for the Lib Dems to have three on planning uh, from the time that we lost a member of our group. And it's only just been changing now. The council needs to reflect um, the polit and review the political proportionality once a year at the annual meeting. You might remember that we took a report which was subsequently withdrawn when Councillor Gamble did move to a different political group, where we attempted to correct that balance. But there was a lot of unrest at that time, so I pulled the report and we left things exactly where they were, 
but we are duty bound to do an annual review of political proportionality and that's here for your determination now. Thank okay, you. I, I think that's clear. Um, right, okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Can we go to the vote please, Jackie? Uh, yes, Jeff. Um, Councillor Allison. Four. Atkin. Four. Wright. Four. Buckler. Four. Bull. Four. Martin Burfoot. Abstain. Sue Burfoot. Against. Sorry. Against. I'm sorry. Against. Thank you. Um, Buttle. Four. Chapman. Four. Donnelly. Four. Elliot. Four. Fitzherbert. Four. Litter. Four. Froggett. Four. Vaness. Four. Campbell. Four. Hill. Four. Hobson. Four. Hughes. Four. Lees. Four. Tony Morley. Four. Michelle Morley. Four. O'Brien. Councillor <coughs> O'Brien. Four. Uh, Purdy. Four. Ratcliffe. Four. Salt. Four. Shirley. Four. Slack. Four. Statham. Four. Sutton. Four. Swindle. Four. Wayne. Four. Wakeman. Four. So that's, I think, 30 in favour, one against, one abstention. So the motion is carried. Thank you very much. And moving on to item 11, the appointment of chairman and vice chairman to these committees. Uh, Sandra, please. Okay, um, Appendix 1 shows the controlling group's nominations for chair and vice chair. Just to explain that the joint consultative group is traditionally appointed at the first committee, because it has to be agreed by the employer and the employee side. Of course, other nominations may be made, Chair. Okay, Councillor Purdy. I move the nominations as on the paper, Bandits 1, Chairman. Councillor Atkin. Second, Chair. Second, uh, Chair. Second. Thank you. Um, any other contributions? Uh, can we go to the vote then, please? Yes, Chair. Um, so you're rather busy tonight, Jackie, aren't you? Sorry. <laughs> Councillor Allison. Four. Archer, um, Atkin. Four. Bright. Four. Buckler. Abstain. Bull. Four. Martin Burfoot. Abstain. Sue Burfoot. Abstain. Buttle. Four. Chapman. Four. Donnelly. Four. Elliot. Four. Fitzherbert. Four. Flitter. Four. Froggett. Four. Vaness. Four. Gamble. Abstain. Hill. Four. Hobson. Four. Hughes. Four. Bees. Four. Tony Morley. Four. Michelle Morley. Four. O'Brien. Sorry, abstain. Purdy. Four. Ratcliffe. Four. Salt. Four. Shirley. Four. Slack. Four. Statham. Four. Sutton. Four. Swindle. Four. Wayne. Four. Wakeman. Four. Um, that's uh, twin. Oh, my maths now. Twenty-seven in favour, five abstentions. Is that correct? So the motion is carried on, on item eleven. Item twelve: appointments to to outside uh, bodies. Uh, Sandra. Okay, this is an annual review of um, outside bodies. And you'll see, uh, first of all, in paragraph two, approved conferences. I've highlighted a number for um, not automatic deletion, but being agenda dependent. 
Obviously, some of these uh, annual events may or may not have uh, subject matter relevant to the District Council. And just to add one at the bottom, which is the addition of the Rural Services Network, um, again highlighted in red, only to be attended with uh, relevant um, agenda items for the Chairman and the Vice Chair of the relevant committee to attend. In a separate appendix at Appendix 1, you'll see the other outside bodies that have also been reviewed. We've gone back to the original body to see where the matches to our corporate plan and there are others that are identified in red for deletion. In terms of the Sheffield City region, whilst we maintain contact with the board momentarily, uh, the audit and scrutiny committees are no more. So I'd ask uh, the council to uh, approve those amendments. Okay, Councillor Tony Morley. Councillor Tony Morley. Is he there? Oh, right there. My, uh, my, my machine's playing up. All right, would you like to uh, move that? That one, yes, I'm very happy to second that as written. So you're moving it, sorry. Uh, sorry your pardon, I'm just, I'm studying it, yes. Uh, I'm very happy to move the report as written, Chair. Okay, Councillor Atkin. Yeah, thank you, Chair, I'd like to second it. Okay, uh, Councillor Finesse. I've lost you. Councillor Finesse. Sorry, I was uh, muted. Yeah, there's just something to look at, Sandra, because I currently represent uh, the authority on the five um, thematic boards at Sheffield City Region Council. Um, Councillor Purdy put me forward for those, uh, and I am sort of in the middle of sort of attending those sessions. So whether they need to be recorded or not, I don't know. Okay. Sandra, if I can come in there, Chair, please. Of course. Chris, you should remember that that was voted out uh, a few months ago. Uh, Dr. David Smith um, of Sheffield Mayoral Combined Authority. Uh, I have an email which shows that they were voted out as non-constituent members, so you don't attend anymore. Um, so, uh, well, I think we need to talk about that um, because that isn't the case. Um, I'm, I'm invited to them all and uh, I am very much a member, but we need no, to discuss not, that obviously. Not going to discuss it with you now. Okay. Uh, okay. Just, I'll show you the email. It was voted, uh, and we are not on those committees anymore. Okay, Councillor O'Brien, please. I just wanted to say how pleased I am that we continue to be members of the uh, Sheffield City Region. I think that is a a, a very very important. Uh, membership organisation for this part of the Derbyshire Dales. Um, I'm I'm intrigued as to why I'm intrigued as to why we're not shown as uh, any membership of any of the D2N2 organisations. Um, is, that, is that an error? Does it mean that uh, uh, the leader is not able to attend on our behalf? And um, finally, I'm reading paragraph 1.4 on page 101, as I'm sure everybody else has. I'm, I find this quite amazing that uh, we're appointing uh, members to these organisations on our behalf and um, we're apparently getting um, no reports back to them as agreed by the council. Uh, I just find that rather dismaying and I'm, I'm surprised actually that um, we continue to propose membership of these outside bodies to members who do not um, abide by a council decision. Okay. Yeah, um, can, can, Councillor Purdy. Can I, yeah, can, if I can respond. Councillor Bryan, representation on D2N2 is by one Derbyshire leader. Uh, the chief exec and uh, the chairman decreed some time ago that they couldn't entertain every leader because it would be too cumbersome. So Councillor Martin Thackeray represents all Derbyshire leaders and reports back to us through the Substreet Strategic Alliance Board. Uh, I do still um, continue to attend the Sheffield Mayor Combined Authority meetings, but I've put Councillor, uh, sorry, I put Mayor Dan Jarvis on notice, as has Councillor Trisha Gilby last year, that there's no point in us attending if there's no continuance of business, business or benefit for our authority. But for this year, I am going to continue to attend uh, and see what happens. As far as outside bodies are concerned, 
we have pulled some because of lack of representation reports back and others will be under review this year as to the worth and benefit. It's not for the benefit of the members attending, it's for the benefit of the council and for those members to report back to council, as you say. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Uh, please, could Jackie take the vote? Councillor Allison. For. Uh, um, Atkin. For. Wright. For. Buckler. For. Bull. For. Martin Barefoot. Abstain. Sue Barefoot. Abstain. Buttle. For. Chapman. For. Donnelly. For. Elliot. Councillor Elliot. Move on. We'll come back to him. Uh, Fitzherbert. For. Flitter. For. Froggett. For. Finesse. Abstain. Gamble. Abstain. Hill. For. Hobson. For. Hughes. For. Please. For. Tony Morley. For. Michelle Morley. For. O'Brien. For. Purdy. For. Ratcliffe. For. Salt. For. Shirley. For. Slack. For. Statham. For. Sutton. For. Swindle. For. Wayne. For. Wegman. For. Councillor Elliot there. No, I think we've lost him. So what are, what are the numbers on that? Um, one, two, three, four. So that's 27 in favour, four abstentions. Thank you very much. So the motion is carried. Um, and for the sealing of documents, Councillor Bright. I, I move the sealing of the documents, Chair. And Councillor Hill. I'll second them. OK, all those in favour, please we have a show of hands. I think that's all in favour. That's unanimous. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to put on record once again our sincere thanks for Sandra for once again leading us through uh, uh, this meeting. All the work she's prepared in her X number of years at this council has been tremendous for all of us. We've all learned a lot, all learned a lot about democracy and how it all works behind the scenes. And I'd like to thank her on all of our and the residents of Derbyshire Dale's behalf. And we'll continue after the end of this council meeting. Thank you and see you in a few moments on the other side, as it were. Good night. Thank you, Sandra.